So we're here with 16 bars with St. John. And this is my first time in Berlin. First time fucking Berlin. I don't even not curse. Who gives a fuck? I'm cursing. Bleep it. No, you can curse. That's the Good. great thing about Germany. You can just say everything. You like outlandish anything. fucking shit. Yeah. Oh, that's fucking amazing. God bless the wretches. <laughs> we dropping the f and uh, the f bombs yeah, like crazy. I can't curse about myself. I feel left out. No, but I just said fuck and shit just like a few Thank minutes you. ago. Thank you. Is that good? Yeah, it's good. It's good. So, but um, I saw in your Insta story that you had a bit of a funny start in Berlin. You were at Flughafen Tegel, and uh, there was a cab driver <laughs> who didn't want to take your bags. What was that about? It's outrageous. It's fucking outrageous. Yo, he was looking at me. I gave him my bag. He looked at me. I'm like, yo, you. you wait, am I going? I gotta pay you too. Like I had to pay you, and I gotta pick up my own bag. Not that I'm opposed to that. I just I expect service. Yeah. I'm gonna give you currency. I'm gonna give you real money. These are real dollars. I expect real service. Okay. Yeah, we worked it out though. W was he cool in the end? No, nah, he was never cool in the end. But we worked <laughs> it out. We worked it out. He was never cool in the end. Oh yeah. Okay, so you put that on, and I'll get you something because uh, I got you a little gift. I thought, since you love cigars, I don't know much about cigars, but I thought maybe you could show me how to smoke one. Maybe we could smoke some, well, not Cohibas, that's a type of cigar, right? But Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, but cute. maybe, yeah, oh, we this could. Is cute. You like oh, this? She's trying to be cute. Yeah, oh, you well. You trying to date me. She brought me cigars. Stop. <laughs> this is relationship level stuff. Listen, I, you heard me saying I'm in a relationship with myself and sometimes I get jealous. You shouldn't bring me gifts. Wait a minute. <laughs> You're in a relationship with yourself? And sometimes I get jealous. Okay. So you but do, but do you wanna She's smoke? By it. Yeah, I'm so confused by it. So do you wanna do you wanna smoke yeah. smoke up here? Yeah, let's light up, fuck it. Okay, but do you know how to do it? You're gonna have yeah, to teach me and walk it up. through. Wait, I'm like, this is your first cigar? This is my first cigar. Oh, oh my god, my so first. Cute, cutest moment ever. Oh so I don't know how cigar. to feel about being called cute. What's wrong with being called cute? It's kind of has something childishy. I'm cute as fuck. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I keep forgetting the mic. No, 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 no. <coughs> yeah, don't be afraid of being called cute. Okay. Be afraid of not being called anything. That means nobody was paying attention. That's some deep shit. Why you gotta hit me with that? <laughs> Here you go. Sense. Hold on, we gotta. All right. All right. Well, I put this between my legs. There we go. Yeah, I hope y'all got that. <laughs> Do you want me to talk in between your legs? If, maybe not. Just around this area. I don't know. You just tell me where you want me to focus. I don't want to. All right, cool. No, you it's got just that it so we have enough sound. All right, cool. Hold this, right? All right. You're going to have to do something I would not typically do, right? You got to bite the tip. Pause that. Hard pause on bite the tip. <laughs> All right? Okay. But you have to bite the tip. Okay, but Try like, bite like the, how much of it? Like just, like just a, the tip? Just the, Wow. Yeah, just a tip. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just gonna, like, I just bite it off. Yeah, but it's gonna break a little bit. Don't worry. Just. Okay. This tastes disgusting. Yeah. Ugh. But you don't got a cigar clip, so this is what we gotta do. So we're doing like, the ratchet, ratchet way? Yeah. I like the ratchets, though, so it worked out. Okay. Can we talk about the word ratchet? <laughs> <clears throat> so usually every time I heard the word ratchet I was thinking of something negative but the way you use it it sounds like something positive it's contextual everything in life is contextual if I say bitch if I say she's a bitch I'm like yeah, that's my bitch oh okay it's context okay right so when I talk about when I talk about women being ratchet or people being ratchet I talk about I'm talking about freedom and expression Three girls. I signed three girls titties just now. Yeah, about that. Is, is that like a usual thing to I, sign sign girls titties? It's life. How unusual could it be? But I'm does sure that happen after every show, or was this special this time? Lots of things happen after shows. Okay. So what? what like, <laughs> <laughs> but um, what's like the craziest thing that happened on this tour after a show? If you may, if you're allowed to elaborate. Ah, uh, I'll let you know. Catch me by the end of the tour. This is the second day of. The European version and so okay but you were in Moscow yeah like prior. two nights ago okay so I that was sort of wild 
Why? What was so wild about it? It was, there were 1,500 people. The venue was like packed. There was a capacity. And it was the experience. The energy in the building was kind of unlike anything I've ever felt before. And I just did my hometown in New York. And that was crazy. And my mom was there and she was watching. So to fly over to Moscow and then do a show and 1,500 people in an event space that felt like an airport, an airplane hangar converted. It was, it was sexy. And they, we were shooting rose petals out of this cannon. <laughs> and they gave me a hundred roses. And I decided that I didn't want to perform on a stage anymore. And I wanted to perform on the side of the balcony. And then I wanted to perform at the back where the, you know, you know the sound and lighting guy was. Oh. It was just, uh, it was crazy. Okay. It felt, it felt important. We prior we we before the interview started we talked about my lineage yeah. and um, I'd like to get into your lineage because you just talked about your mom being at your show in in New York right let's light up by the way okay yeah let me, let me light you up okay so what way the, this way or that no, way that way like this it's gonna be a little rough because we have a proper clip so you okay. kind of gotta lick it okay and you window aside well, like um, all right that was weird but all right that's not what I meant what did you mean I meant like you that. said lick I meant it you gotta like just put it put it in your mouth okay wait hold on Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. You've never smoked a cigar before, right? No. You don't inhale. Try to get this concept, right? You don't inhale. Okay, I just You puff. swirl it around and your everything about this sounds sexual. <laughs> it just does. I'm not even intending for it to. You swirl it around okay. in your mouth, the smoke. You swirl it around, you get a sense of the flavor. Okay. And then you blow it out. You don't inhale. So it never reaches your throat or your lungs. If it does, what happens? Nothing happens, but that's not the intention. Okay, fine. You know, okay. it's not weed. It's about taste. It's about taste. Okay. All right. Okay, I'm ready. It's about taste and texture and sophistication. Okay, ready? I'm, I'm ready for this All shit. All right, cool. Come Let on. me write it up for you. Hit me. She's like, I'm ready. Stop playing. Yeah. Keep going. Keep going. Still? Yeah, there's a lot to light. You get the concept. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, yeah, you lit. This shit's dope. How do I hold this? Like this? Hold however you want. You're free. Okay. There's no rules to this. I thought there's like some etiquette. Etiquette what? For who? Who can tell you how to live better than you? My mom. Is it good though? Did I take some? Did it, is it okay? Is it good? It's better than good. It's considerate. Yeah, you I get thought. It. Yeah, because you like these. Yeah, I like these. Wow, that was thoughtful. Thank yeah. you so much. You're welcome. But yeah. let, let's get back into your yeah. lineage. So, you said you were like in a three three year. Um, Tact between Guyana and New Brooklyn, York yeah. and Brooklyn. Why three years? Like, what did your parents do? My mom was a nurse's aide at the time, and she started a cleaning company. It's funny, I remember the name of the cleaning company. What was the name? It was called Wind Cherry Cleaning Company. I don't know if she still owns the name, but she might. And we were so poor, so the money, the currency, stretched so much further. That's why I lived in Guyana. It wasn't luxurious, the idea. It was because we were poor. And she would save up money being a nurse's aide. And she had four kids. It's four kids to consider on a nurse's aide salary. So she would save up enough money and send us back to live with my dad in Guyana. And then she would go back to work. And she would work and work. And then when, it would, when she had enough saved up, then she'd missed us so much, we'd come back. It just happened to be three years. I don't know. I don't think that was her thought. Okay. It just happened that way. Okay. And um, what? How does she? Uh, are your parents very re religious? If I may ask. My mom. My mom's a minister. Yeah. My mom's super religious. Hence my name. My real name is Carlos St. John. Okay. My mother named me St. John. My dad named me Carlos. Okay. And but how does she feel about your music? Uh, my mom is proud of the progress she's ha she's looking at her son realize his dreams she doesn't care if she listens or closes her eyes and watches she's happy to see me go from something that she couldn't imagine me being at to something that she couldn't imagine me being at you get me okay. she's proud it wouldn't matter what I was doing 
when when a parent yeah when a parent is watching their offspring live in moments that are grander or greater that they could have seen for their own offspring all you can do is applaud if i watch my kid grow up to be something i didn't i didn't know was possible i just sit back with pride i wouldn't care okay but what why why didn't you what was so impossible about it because you, you were already in music because you, you were go like uh, writing for other people so i mean your mom knew about that but like now suddenly you're in the limelight that's that's a big difference did your dream change or was it always uh, writing for other people was never my dream okay but how did that happen like did you just that was failure i was putting on music myself and i was i sort of failed i failed And then an opportunity opened up, a door opened up, like a door closed and a window opened up. And I was writing for other people. And it wasn't what I wanted to do. What did you want to do when you grew up? Did you want to be an interviewer? Um, no. What do you want to be? Well, um, I believe I wanted to be a judge. What do you want to be now? Happy. Deep cool. shit, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> No, but okay, but you... So you always wanted to be on stage and perform. Music. You always, okay. I wanted to make music. Performance is just a component Art. of making music, right? That's the expression. That's the physical expression of something I dreamt up, which is to make the art, make the music. Yeah. I started writing for other people because I couldn't figure out how to make music and make it, make myself successful or have a thriving economic situation i wasn't making no money and i have to survive you have to figure that out and songwriting came up and i say yeah it's a back door it was the very first time somebody was asking me for something rather rather than me asking them for something imagine how that feels you go from yo yo give me an opportunity can i please have an opportunity to someone looking at you like yo i need you to do something for me can you do something for me i was like oh oh i think i understand what's happening so I played that role for as long as I could. And when I realized there was a ceiling for that and I didn't enjoy that ceiling, I wanted to dream bigger, so I dreamt bigger. I went back to the original dream, which is freedom, which is this. I make my art and I express it the way I want to. You actually said it's a very selfish album in an interview you said it was you know done for yourself made for yourself is that a reason why there's like literally just one feature on it or was that a different reason uh, does it need features not at all Good. trust me I love the way it is but I was surprised because usually with a de debut album people always try to put like all kinds of people on it and obviously since you're already rooted in the music industry it would have been easy for you but instead you just did it without just with one in the beginning with lust right yeah i care about music the songs tell me what the songs need okay. lust felt great with janelle on it her voice was beautiful it just it was a great pairing it was an unorthodox thing to do too. have her sing have her oh, people didn't understand why i was doing that when before the uh, before collection one came out when i would let people hear it they were like you're gonna have somebody else open up the project with you on it that's confusing i said for who For your ears, your eyes, or your imagination. You tell me. Sounds good. Feels right. It didn't require any other features. It didn't it wasn't missing anything else. I didn't add anything else. If I ever feel like it's missing something, I'll go get it. Yeah. This is hella deep. I know, I know. <laughs> Do you know where I heard your music the first time? You don't. I we 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 talk <laughs> No, no. Sadly, we don't have the we don't have such a big strip club culture But here. You got strip clubs, right? We do. We do. Um You gonna take me to a strip club after this? Possibly. Um, <laughs> How are we gonna finish these cigars if it's not at a strip club? I don't know. Anywhere we can, but I'm sure the boys know a few strip clubs. I know board, brothels. If that's a help, brothels are there's quite a few, but strip clubs What is not I mean? such a big thing. Like pay? Like yeah, like yeah. Prostitution is um, not illegal here. I mean that's cool, but me pay. Listen, you can get it for free. There's some girls that no, but what I I was trying to get at something. The first time I actually heard your music, it's this crazy. Was on the uh, Joe Budden podcast. That's wild, yeah. Did That's you wild. did you know that? 
I heard it after somebody pointed it out to me. Yeah. I didn't know that's where you heard it, though. That's cool. Yeah, I know. I was, listen- I was listening to the podcast, and I was like, what is this? It was selfish. It was, self- it was selfish. Yes. Wow. Yeah. It's a fucking great song. Yes. I don't give a shit if I wrote it or somebody else wrote it. It's a fucking great song. What do you mean, wrote it or somebody else wrote it? No, no, no. no. I wrote it. What I mean by that is almost, you almost expect it not to be proud of your own work. Okay. Like, you can't say I'm beautiful because that's arrogant. Fuck out of here. It's a great song. I wrote it. And I, but I wouldn't care if I didn't write it. If I heard that song from someone else, I would have reacted the same way. That's what I meant. Well, do you care about the whole ghostwriting, non-ghostwriting? D- d- because right now it's like a big thing. I don't know how in tuned you are currently with what's going on, but there's like the whole beef between Pusha T and Drake. Because Pusha's like, you don't write your own music. Like everybody says that. But does that really matter? Like, I mean, you say it doesn't matter. Or do you? It's a dark conversation. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dark conversation. Look. Did you not? Did you not? Um, do you know I got the internet, right? I do, but when you're traveling, sometimes things get out of hand. So it's the internet, fam. It's the same internet in every country. <laughs> nah, it's crazy. Now I heard, mm-hmm. I heard what's going on. Do what? Like, does it matter, Ghost Rider? I don't know. Would I that, think it's a case. Would that affect you if you were listening to some somebody and you'd be like, oh, they didn't write their own shit? Would that make you? So many people don't write the songs that they sing. Yo, it's talent. You ain't, you're not giving this interview and shooting the interview and recording the audio, making sure the sound is right. Who expects you to do all that? <clears throat> this is true. Some people have different skill sets. That's why I wrote songs for other people. They didn't all have the same skill set to write, but they had the skill set to deliver it. Actors aren't expected to write their own script. So it's case by case. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have a script that everybody's supposed to live by. I live by my own rules. I don't want anybody writing my stuff. I'm quite happy and equipped to write my own shit. In fact, I like my own writing. Good for me. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, but um, do you do you even care about the kind of beef things in your pe- between your peers? Or? I think it's hella entertaining. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's hip hop. It's a fantastic sport. If you can't say what you feel in an ex- in a genre as expressive as hip hop, if I got a problem with you and I can't tell you I got a problem with you then I'm not fully utilizing the sport the way it's supposed to be. I mean, I say it's a sport because you gotta be an athlete. You gotta be built for this. So So, um, there's a few lyrics that I really, really wanna talk to you about. So this is um, on Selfish. And you go, and I quote, I wish we were both somebody else so you wouldn't be somebody else's. I don't want to lay here by myself. Ain't afraid, to, ain't afraid to say I'm selfish. The lyric is actually, I wish we were both somebody else so we wouldn't be somebody else's. Okay. It's not that she left. It's we belong, to other ple- we belong to other people. So I wish this was a different set of circumstances so that maybe we could end up where we, w- we both wanted to be. Yeah. You get me? I, I, I do. So I do. All right. Okay. You, you got a boyfriend? Um, no, I'm currently single. Thank you. Publicly, Carter, she's single. Send all <laughs> inquiries <laughs> to her email. Jump in her DM right now. Right? Please don't. <laughs> right. Now, imagine, right? Imagine you had a boyfriend. I'm sure you've had a boyfriend before. Or maybe you had a girlfriend. Who the fuck knows? I don't know. We uh, no. No? No. Not, no girls? No girls. Okay. Girls. Everybody's sad now. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, imagine you had a boyfriend. And I had a girlfriend, but we came here and it was an energy. And you liked it. You were like, yo, I'm into this. I like all this chocolate and cheetah shit. And this Nicaraguan cigar smoke. And I can get used to this. Imagine that, right? Okay. Let's, let's pretend like that's not the truth, right? All right? And imagine I had a girl. I'm like, I like all this Kenyan activity and this, this long hair and this nude dress. But we can't engage. There's nothing we could do. We're not supposed to. We agree to a different set of circumstances. We would sing selfish. I wish you were both. We were both somebody else, so we wouldn't be somebody else's. You understand? I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. There's some more. <laughs> I listen to the album a lot. I'm not gonna lie. Okay. This is um, God bless the internet. Yeah, I got a girlfriend. Yeah, I should be faithful. 
Well, I can't go for my Wi-Fi And I can't give you my cable If you feel like this about anybody, sing this motherfucker Whoa Hey well, first of all, comparing your girlfriend and the side chick <laughs> with cable and Wi-Fi, that's just, I don't know, that's just mean somehow. I, that that kind of hurt me, but I was like, is God damn, and, and you're cheating. So, you know, is there actually a significant other, if I may ask? Right now? No, 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 no. Oh, so currently single? You. Slide in the DM, slide in the... Okay. Whoa. Whoa, slide in the DM. I tell you, I'm in a relationship with myself and I get jealous. So you cheat? On myself? No, when you're with your significant other. I've, and why cable and Wi-Fi? I've Come had indiscretion because you need both. Imagine your life without both. First of all, <laughs> first of all, Wi-Fi doesn't exist without cable. This is true. You can't have Wi-Fi without cable. Okay. Right? Yeah. I need both. A side chick and a main A side chick and a main chick? I'm just saying I need Wi-Fi and cable. You interpret that how you please. I said it. I think of you like Wi-Fi and I think of her like cable. I don't. You get what I'm saying. I get I, what you're saying. I don't know. I'm, I, I'm a strong believer in monogamy, so I, I'm kind of like, ah. ah, ah. You know? uh, okay, hold on. Let's talk about monogamy. No, we're not. No, I yeah, still have a few. Yeah, let's talk about monogamy. We, we, we could come back. To quite, look, look, let's live our lives. Let's be as free, we want, as, free as we want to be. Okay, fine. You believe in monogamy. I do. Tell me why. I don't know. I think it's just something that... It started when I watched a documentary about penguins. And penguins, when penguins decide to be together, they stay together for forever till one of them dies. And that just kind of did it for me. I don't know why. <laughs> don't look at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> I watched the same documentary about the penguins. I didn't get the feeling you got. <laughs> I did not get the same feeling. You, you you saw the penguin documentary and you were like, oh my God, these penguins are so sweet. Yes. That's what you got from that. Yes. I, I want to be a penguin when I grow up. That's what you thought to yourself. Kinda. And I like penguins. They wear nice suits. Yes. Tailor made shit. Exactly. Tom Ford suits these penguins wear. I like it. No, but Look, I just like the concept of monogamy. I like the concept too. But it's a concept. True. You really believe that you don't need anyone else? You might like the idea of intimacy. And I don't want to tell you what you like. That's not what I mean. That's not what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But most people like the idea of intimacy. You like the idea of having someone you, you can trust. So when you're in a relationship with someone, you no longer become sexually attracted to anyone else? Yeah. You don't or you do? I don't. So a sexy guy walks in a room and you don't, you don't notice it? Well... I just don't care. Not caring and not noticing are two different. No, and I, and I, there's a there's a saying in German. It's um, uh, gucken kann man draußen. Nee, Appetit kann man holen kann man sich draußen. Gegessen wird zu Hause, which means you can get your appetite outside, but you eat at home. You get what I'm saying? Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm with you. See, that's what I believe in. I live by a different set of rules. I live by the rules. What I want to make me happy. The things that I want to make me happy. No one person is enough to fulfill all the needs that you have. It's not realistic. Okay. That's not possible. I can't isolate the way I think about the world in that way. I can't isolate myself emotionally like that. I need you and I need her and she provides a different, she does something different. She might inspire me, but you might make me emotive. Yeah. You know what would fit to you? Like Mormon, Mormons with sister wives. Whoa. They have like a few women. I didn't say I wanted to be. <laughs> 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 I like the concept of monogamy too, but in but it's pr hard for you to in do practice, it. it's not realistic. Okay. okay. Why aren't you in a relationship? You believe in monogamy so much. What do you mean? Well, is this an interview about me now? Yes, it is. You didn't know. This is a setup. This is this the is, setup. This is punked. This is. Oh my God! Stop. <laughs> Your coworkers punked you. This is really a date. It's oh, this is show. actually a dating show? Thank you so much. It's the Ghetto Lenny Dating Show. <laughs> You're here with Ghetto Lenny. Good to see you. This afternoon on this dating episode, we're here with Kenyan supermodel. Uh, Stephanie Carl, who St will take the mic back. Thank you. What does ghetto mean for you? Ghetto is ghetto. 
Yeah. Yeah, but you keep saying the get ghetto Lenny. Um, like, we, for usually ghetto is kind of in a negative sense. Yeah. Usually, but y- is it still negative for you? I ghetto feel like is the way those you are the. Use it is not ne- negative. Those are the things that I come from. I come from this. I come from the hood. I'm, I come from the ghetto. Okay. So, so when I say ghetto Lenny, it's a version of something that you understand to be sexy and opulent. But I'm kind of like a rougher version. You get it? It's a little more aggressive. Okay, and is sexy for you also silk shirts, or is that just aesthetic? No, nice. it touch it. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna touch it. There's different textures of silk. Yeah, I was, I was gonna say it doesn't feel like the. It's different. It's, silk isn't. It's like black people coming in only one color. That'd be crazy, wouldn't it? A one texture. It's not possible. Yeah, and it's silk. But where do you where do you get your inspiration for for like your shirts? Because when I when I think of silk shirts, I think of Biggie, like straight up. That's the first thing I think of. Weirdly enough. Well, now when you think of silk shirts, you get a different reference. Now you got Saint John you can think of. Okay. I can recontextualize. I recontextualize the idea of what that meant. For me, when I saw silk at first, right, you had to be on a boat and a yacht in Miami, and you had a lot of money, and it was a different type of opulence. It was that type of cinema. But for me, coming from where I came from, silk for me meant freedom. Silk meant opulence and luxury, but in a way that I wanted to. I took silk and I made, I made silk pants for people to wear like streetwear. You don't got to be super rich. You don't got to be on a boat. Wear it because it's yours. Wear it because you silk, because you're sexy enough to do it. Wear it because you believe in it. Silk is like freedom for me, man. It should feel good. It should look good. It should smell good. Is that what you see your future in? Like, um, just not just music, but also mostly fashion? Like, the triple triple threat thing usually, you know, fashion, music. What, what was the other thing? Not acting. Do, would you act? Well, you model. I know that. So, modeling. Cat's out the fucking bag now. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Everybody knows. <laughs> no, no, no. I did. I, I modeled for a second because that was the first, one of the first opportunities I ever had was modeling. It was the first thing I ever did. They paid me money to pay, take pictures, nigga. I was like, what? Y'all want me to take pictures for money? With my clothes on? Done. That's easy. That was easy. That was better. Would you still do that, though? Nah, it's not as expressive. I modeled and I stopped modeling because they wanted to use my image and my likeness, but they didn't care what I had to say. Fuck out of here. Okay. Okay. That's not enough for me. You want to curate the pictures yourself no beyond that beyond that i think i'm i'm a result of what i have to say and what i've experienced not what i look like when somebody idolizes you for what you look like then they're inspired by the wrong fucking things i didn't make myself look like this if you think i'm sexy tell my mom text her i didn't do it you get me my skin ain't glowing and glistening because it's something i did I came like this. Everything else is my choice, though. I want you to care about me for my choices, what I say, how I think, where I see the world, where I want to go, expression. I'm, I'm, I don't know. Maybe I'm an artist. I don't fucking know. But regarding the, your question, triple threat, do I want? You should know. I don't give a fuck about fashion. I like things that are cool. I like clothes, right? This is this will seem Con- contradictory. Yeah. It's not. That's okay. The idea of fashion, like fashion as the industry of fashion, I don't give a fuck about that. No. I don't want to go get dressed up and be around pompous people posing for the idea of being belonging to something. No, no, no. I came from the hood. I, I grew up in Brooklyn and Guyana. No, no, no. We don't got the same beliefs. Some of my friends still sell drugs. I like cool things. I like clothes. But I don't care about fashion. You get me? But do you like making clothes? Because you just said that you got you yeah, made yeah, yeah. So, so, so Yeah, I like making of, clothes. A little part because it's expression. Okay. So just the creative process. Yeah, yeah it's just another outlet. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes I want to work with colors. Sometimes I don't want to work with words. Sometimes it's cooler to work with fabric. Because you can shape it and mold it. You can really be creative sometimes with fashion. Sometimes words are limiting, you know? Some things you can't say with words. That's why there's body language. I like fucking colors. I hate that they tell you that this is a woman's item and this is a man's item. All my colors that I like, I like pastels and fucking pinks and salmons and 
Mahenta and all that, you know what I'm saying? I like all that. I make sure my buttons, my shirt's button on the left side. That's supposed to be a blouse. Blouse is button on the left side, right? I believe, I, 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 I'm not quite, I don't know. No, well, I do have them. I just don't remember which side the buttons are on. All right, when you, when you go home and you figure out what side, you text me, okay? <laughs> Okay. Um, no, but I'm um, actually what, with what you just said that there's no gender to like there shouldn't be gender to clothing. So I'm guessing you probably uh, young thug is also one of those people thug a thugger or sex now. I'm not sure if he changed his name back. <laughs> <Okay>. um, <clears throat> if he's also one of those people that doesn't believe in you know or doesn't seem to care about like wearing a dress or etc. Fuck it, yeah. Would you wear a dress? I wouldn't wear a dress. No. Oh. But if I thought if if I wanted to repurpose a dress as something else, mm -hmm. I wouldn't wear a dress as a dress, mm -hmm. just because I don't want to wear a dress as a dress. But if I wanted to, I would. So if, if Thug wants to wear a dress as a dress, that's cool if that's how he feels. You can't tell him nothing. What are you going to tell him? I personally don't care. Yeah, fam. You can express yourself however the fuck you want. You want to pull up to the Met bar, to the Met Gala on a fucking skateboard, do that shit. You know what I mean? I want to see you losing weight, this motherfucker. You hear me? <laughs> I wanna see you turned up. If you ain't passed out leaving this motherfucker, you ain't doing enough tonight. Okay? Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 Hey fucking man. Amen. Hallelujah. I pray for strippers. Are you already working on something new? You seem like somebody who has like a few things already ready to go, lying around. Collection one. I'm always making things. Because I like shit. I like, I love music. I like clothes. I like lights. I like... Do you care about politics and that kind of jazz? It affects me, so yes. But I don't talk about it. I can see that. There's other things I need to do. So I'm going to do those first. I don't have the economic power or the social platform to impact a political landscape. So I save my voice for when it's time. Yeah. Okay. But that shit's going to come. Has, um, since, you, since you released the album, have any people reached out to you? Um, other artists like trying to get you to start writing for them again or yeah I got a lot of new friends you want to drop some names or not no for what okay then don't no. drop it in the interviews <laughs> <laughs> this is about St. John but how do you feel about so many people now coming up you know coming towards you going at you wanting you is that a good feeling or is it like scary it's not scary because this is where I wanted to be it's where I designed myself to be Look, in some regards, the, your instinct is to go, oh, you love me now. And in the other regard, in the other case, it makes sense. I, oh, I get it. Yeah, I get why you love me now. You can see it. You can see the full picture. Yeah. Not everybody has vision, right? Most people, in fact, don't have vision. And I'm learning not to fault people that don't have vision. I fault the people that are close enough to me that they should have been able to see it. Them I fault. But somebody who's now discovering and now I get it. Everybody wants a shit that looks sexy. So like people that knew you but didn't believe in you, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, I don't have any. There's no love for them. This was St. John here in Berlin with 16 bars. My first cigar. Uh, thank you for teaching me. <laughs>